This episode of the Golf Unfiltered podcast is brought to you by WorldwideGolfShops.com. Be sure to go out to WorldwideGolfShops.com for all of your equipment, apparel, and accessory needs. They've even got training aids. They've got all the great stuff from all the brands that you hear on our podcast every week. So once again, that is WorldwideGolfShops.com. You're listening to the Golf Unfiltered Podcast, your source for in-depth interviews with the biggest names, brands, and personalities in golf. Our mission, to keep you informed and help you enjoy the game even more. And now, the owner and host of the Golf Unfiltered Podcast, Adam Fonseca. That's right, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to the Golf Unfiltered Podcast. I am your host, as always, Adam from GolfUnfiltered.com. Follow us all over social media at Golf Unfiltered. You can send us an email, golfunfiltered at gmail.com. Happy New Year to all of you. It is 2020. I can't believe we've made it this far. Hope you all uh, celebrated safely. I know we tried to. (laughs) We had a lot of fun when we went out where we went out. Nice little local place here in town. And I swear at some point I'm going to realize that I can't do what I used to do (laughs) in my 20s. And here I'm almost done with my 30s, so at least some point you'd have to think, I'd figure things out. But at any rate, welcome again to the Golf and Filter podcast. We're continuing on, folks. We're continuing on. And so this is just going to be a quick first of the year update from yours truly. And we have a great 2020 planned for this podcast, for the website. If you go out to golfandfilter.com uh, in the most recent few weeks, you'll notice that there's a little bit of a different look. I know that we like to change things around fairly often on the website. And I think it's one of those things where... You know, if you're a creator or if you have some form of creative outlet, you're probably never 100% happy with the way it looks. At least that's what I've been told. And so um, we actually had a reason to make some changes this time around. So if you go out to golfandfilter.com, you're going to see a landing page now. And hopefully it's a little bit easier to navigate than it has been in the past. In the past, you probably remember, we just had all of our most recent updates come up at once. Now we actually have some windows, I like to call them, where you can go and click and find different categories or different sections of the website. First thing you're going to see right off the top of the uh, on the landing page is the Golf Unfiltered podcast. Uh, the ability to subscribe to this, which you can do on iTunes as well as Spotify. And by the way, you hear me, if you've listened to this podcast for any length of time, at least in the last year or so, you know that we are partnered with the Hacker's Paradise. And you can also subscribe to this podcast via their feed on iTunes as well, just called The Hacker's Paradise. It's actually THP Radio for those who are looking on iTunes right now. And of course, we have the same content on both sites. A hundred thousand listeners, over a hundred thousand listeners, were able to listen to these episodes last year, which is absolutely mind-boggling to me. And, and I want to thank all of you for listening to even one episode of the Golf and Filtered podcast, let alone over a hundred thousand of you were tuned in and, and listened to all the great interviews as well as the the uh, the feedback that we had on new product releases. We did a few reviews that was something new that we tried in 2019, uh, audio reviews, and we're going to do a little bit more of that in 2020. But one of the biggest things I wanted to talk about in regard to the website, uh, in addition to the new landing page, which please let me know your feedback on that as well if it is easier to navigate, is really just the overall reach and scope of Golf Unfiltered. Now, with our partnership with the Hackers Paradise, you'll see that, uh, at least over the last few months, we've had a lot of different brands on the podcast. Uh, Brands that we hadn't had before, a lot of first-timers had come on. And uh, truth be told, as you all know, I like to be very transparent with you all, we've got more brands reaching out to us to appear on the show, which we love. And so if you're listening to this, folks, and you are part of a brand and you want to tell the story about your product or service, Come on the show. You know how to reach out and you know how to get in touch with us. All the contact information is on the website. But as such, and as those of you who have been longtime listeners know, our site continues to evolve. And so what we have done is we have positioned ourselves at Golf Unfiltered to really be more of a a marketing partner with brands all across the golf spectrum. And it's some instances is not only golf centric products. So if you remember We had uh, a couple uh, interesting guests on over the last couple of months. Most notably, uh, we had a CBD distributor on, which is probably a first. We had some mental coaches on. We had some uh, just, well, we actually had a physical therapist on. And so while all of these things tangentially touch on the game of golf, it's not only golf-centric. And so as 
our site has evolved. And as we've become more of a marketing partner for products and services and brands, we hope to bring more uh, just differences, more, more different products and services out to your headphones, to your car stereo, wherever you consume our podcast. And so stay tuned for more of those types of interviews coming up. We've already got a ton lined up already, and it's kind of weird because I I tend to have pretty decent time management skills, but I think, you know, this on top of my normal nine to five, you know, it's really putting that to the test, and that's a good thing. I love having things scheduled out far in advance, and so hopefully you'll appreciate the fact that we're trying to get more, uh, you know, variety on the podcast, and we are always open to feedback from all of you. And so as we continue to partner with other brands, you know, once again, reach out if you are interested in being on the show. Listeners, if there's a brand that you would like us to reach out to proactively, we try to do that as often as we can. Uh, and quite frankly, we've had a lot more success over the last year and a half or so with getting a response, let alone people to come on the show and that's very, very encouraging, and thank you to all brands who have already done so. But let us know, folks, because we are always open to ideas. And on that point, you're going to see a few other, or you're going to hear a few other changes on the podcast as well. Now, you already know that we have a long, we have two long-standing partnerships slash sponsorships. One, of course, with the Hackers Paradise that I've mentioned before as our, our true business partners. But we also have had Cleveland, Srixon, and Zegzio on for what, maybe th two or three years now. I think it, definitely over two years. And they will continue to be one of our sponsors here on the podcast. And you're going to hear great stuff from them as new releases come out. I mean, this is the busy season right now. We've got the PGA Merchandise Show right down, uh, just around the corner at the end of this month. And uh, all new product releases are coming out. It's just a flurry of new things. And it's an exciting time for golf equipment fans, for fans of the game. And... Cleveland and Srixon and Zegzio, they've already got new stuff coming out. You've already seen all of those things on our website. Zegzio, for crying out loud, they just had an entire new family of uh, it's the Zegzio 11 series. They had the X series as well. Those look fantastic. I'm excited to try those out relatively soon. And we hope to continue to bring more news from Cleveland, Srixon, and Zegzio as well. But that's not all. Because as our brand, as our site has expanded, so too has our portfolio of sponsors. And so we are also very excited to welcome Ben Hogan Golf Company on as a, as a sponsor as well. And UST Mamiya, the great golf shaft company. They're going to be a sponsor throughout the year also. And so it's exciting times. I mean, this is something when I started, oh, I don't know. I, well, I've been writing since, oh man, 2005, I think. No, actually, before that, I've been doing this for quite a while. Uh, but when I started the podcast, which is a little over three or four years ago, I believe, I need to, I should probably write this down somewhere. Uh, I never thought we would go to this this level. You know, this was always just a, a creative outlet for me to kind of voice my opinion on things that were happening on the PGA Tour. And it's evolved over time into what it is today. And I just, uh, when I sat back at the end of last year, and I looked at the number of listens, I, I was really taken aback. And, you know, it's it's obvious that you all have taken uh, liking to the stuff that we do here. I can't say thank you enough for all the things that you have shown to all the kindness that you have shown to us here at Golf Unfiltered. And of course, really none of this would be possible without, you know, the friendships that I've established and the brands that have trusted us and those, of course, being the two that I mentioned just a little bit ago. And a special thank you, of course, to uh, my buddy Josh Babbitt, who is really, uh, I, I consider him a mentor in many ways. He's, he's really pointed me in the direction of how to grow Golf Unfiltered the best way that I can. Uh, I still have a lot to learn, and I'm sure he would probably tell you the same. And, of course, we hope to bring JB back on uh, the podcast multiple times throughout the year because it's always a great uh, it's always a great conversation with him. You know, I wish you guys could hear some of the conversations that he and I have, uh, along with our uh, mutual friend, Michael Verska, just about the industry in general, about new products that are coming out. Of course, all of this stuff is off the record, but, you know, just I, I really wish that you guys could hear some of these things because I've learned so much just from hanging out with those two guys and really talking to the people that they know and, and hearing more about the new things that come out and the new thought 
and the uh, processes that go into new products. It really is just fascinating. And there's a lot of that thought that occurs at the hackersparadise.com. And if you're not familiar with that website, uh, I'm shocked because it's a huge website, actually. <laughs> I mean, they've got, I think, over, well, the biggest thing with them is they've got a member forum that you can go on, you know, a message board for those who, you know, prefer that terminology. You can go on there and they've got over, I think at the time of this recording, six and a half million posts. It's it's insane how many uh, conversations go on out there. And, and everyone is just, for the most part, super kind and, you know, they get along. There's a lot of good banter that goes back and forth, but everyone truly loves the game on that website. And so that's something that we hope to expand even more on over at Golf Unfiltered in 2020. So new partnerships, new sponsors, new brand awareness. We hope to partner with additional uh, companies here moving forward. And it's just been going to be an exciting year for us. It's really going to be an exciting year. And I'm glad that you are all on, uh, you know, on this ride with us, too. And I've said this a million times, even in this podcast so far, any feedback is appreciated. Send us an email, golfunfiltered at gmail.com. You can also get in touch with us at social media. I know you love the game, even though it drives every single one of us crazy. Hi, this is Bill Hobson, and I host the Four Golfers Network podcast, where we celebrate golf in every way imaginable. You'll hear interviews with the biggest names in the sport, travel features, special contests, and we even take your calls. So after you listen to Adam and Golf Unfiltered, give us a try. Subscribe to the 4 Golfers Network podcast, that's F-O-R-E, on Apple Podcasts, Google Play, and everywhere else podcasts are found. All right, folks, we are back. And the other topic I wanted to touch on today uh, is in regard to a new product release and a ongoing trend that has been seen in golf equipment, at least, in other industries since there have been more than one company in existence. <laughs> and that is the what many would call imitation game, or what I like to call the flattery game. And quite frankly, all that means, folks, as the name implies, is when a, or- a company or an organization or a brand releases a new product that looks very similar to something that was released a year ago, two years ago, heck, even in some cases five years ago. The most recent uh, example of this is the extremely good Wilson Golf, uh, their new staff model high toe wedge. Now you saw on the website, we did a quick review of the high toe wedge and I've tried it and it's a fantastic golf club. The shape itself is actually one of two new shapes that Uh, Wilson staff has come out with the one being more traditional in shape and then this one of course has a higher toe with grooves that go up the toe as well you'll see all the pictures on the website and pretty much all over social media and as one would expect a lot of chatter has come up about how similar this club shape looks to similar clubs past releases from other brands of course the first thing that came to mind was the tailor-made high toe wedge spelled differently by the way and before that Callaway's PM grind wedge Phil Mickelson having input into the shape of a wedge that also had a high toe the first of which if I remember correctly was in 2015 there has since been a uh, PM grind 2 that has come out but it even goes deeper than that it goes farther back than that hell hell, you can even make the argument that the ping (laughs) i2s they had a sand wedge that had a higher toe Remember that ugly looking thing? I mean, Ping Loyalists, I'm sorry, but that was an ugly golf club. That thing looked like an elephant ear. Literally, literally, just the gray color and it just had a weird triangular toe shape. I don't know. But the fact is, the point being, this really isn't a new innovation. Yeah, there have been some tweaks to it. They've, They've made it much more playable over the years. All three companies that I've just mentioned. And... Golfers picked up on it right away. Well, this looks exactly like that, or, you know, that, that's human nature. That's how people are going to react. And so this happens all the time. You know, we, we've oh, I've gotten a few emails about it. What are my thoughts on the whole thing? I mean, I even went out on social the day before the actual embargo date and said, hey, look, guys, there's going to be a new product that's released tomorrow, and it's going to look pretty similar to other things in the past. Because I knew that people were going to have that reaction. Again, human nature. But I wanted to dig a little bit deeper, and I wanted to ask the question to you all. 
how big of a deal do you think this is with two products looking very similar but from two competing brands well i went out to two different areas of course i went to old trusty twitter and i asked the question to you all and i got a few responses one here is from uh, our friend david edmonds it's just the way it is some things work better than others meaning in the case at least with wilson does this high toe wedge perform differently than tailor-mades or callaways i can tell you it it really doesn't in my opinion at least i've tried all three and they they're all pretty much the same i mean there's different there's a different feel among the three of them i don't know if it has to do with the metals or, or whatever there are slight differences in appearance but for what it's worth the club is made for a very specific purpose to give you more real estate on the club face especially if you lay the club open and you want to hit a flop shot or a sand shot or whatever for those of you that might be a better player and you hit your uh, your lob shots or whatever off the the toe of your your wedge that's what it's made for just as the tailor made one was just as the callaway one was we've got another comment here from uh from our good friend gareth gareth williams and, and he gives a very uh common example when this question comes up Cars look similar, with different badges and tweaks to how gadgets look. Clothes, shoes, electronics, phones. It's fashion and marketing. Every industry is the same. And that's been pretty common. That, that thankfully, has been the overarching opinion, at least as far as I've seen, on the similarities between different products. Another comment here. Let me scroll up here. Uh, from, actually, a golf equipment, uh, equipment company. Uh, new level golf equipment. It's inevitable. Because there are far more golf companies than there are factories to produce the products. We were certainly, we being New Level, were certainly not the first company to use CNC milled forging. But we did make quite a splash in 2018 and several others have now followed suit. I'm sure that there's probably going to be some people that disagree with that timeline there. But the point still stands. There are companies that do similar things using similar machines and to... Uh, in this case, Eric, who I know is behind this uh, Twitter account, in, in this case, he does mention, rightfully so, that there are few factories. There are, there are a few factories that have the capability to produce the clubs that we all enjoy. So those are just a few of the... Oh, here's another one from uh, Chris B. Uh, Convergent evolution in action. Ooh, that's deep. <laughs> I'm, getting the, I'm getting the things that appear in other companies are the ones that aren't gimmicks, so are good for consumers. I believe what he's saying is that this is just the nature of the beast. And many others said the same thing. So I actually went to the hackersparadise.com. Again, I mentioned that they've got a great forum over there, and I posed the same question. What are your thoughts on the topic of competing golf brands with similar-looking products? So we've got a few people here, many of whom also responded on Twitter. So thanks, guys, for, for all of that. One uh, guy here, uh, Canada Dan. Or Canada Dan. <laughs> Dan. Uh, a problem for consumers? Hell no, Dan says. I've encountered same shape difference. difference. <laughs> I've encountered same shape different result. Dan, you're making me really check my reading skills there. I love the competitive idea of letting companies put their best foot forward and getting the chance to pick whatever the hell I want from, from what comes. Very aggressive response there, Dan. And I agree with you. And that's one of the points that I brought up. Uh, in a conversation with uh, somebody else recently, you know, shortly after this new release. There are a lot of brand loyal golfers out there. You all know that I'm, a, you know, a loyal brand user of Cleveland and Srixon. And, you know, if they came out with a high toe wedge, while I probably don't have the game uh, to uh, to play one of those, uh, you know, I would definitely consider it if that was a type of technology that I wanted in my golf bag. The same can be said for any other golf brand loyalist. And so there's really nothing wrong with a brand noticing that something works well for a competitor and assuming that they're not infringing on in any trademarks or patents, they go ahead and they create something very similar to appease those golfers who are loyal to their brand but also want that same technology. I feel there's nothing wrong with that. And a few others on the Hacker's Paradise uh, agreed with that. Here we have Luke Martin saying that imitation is the sincerest form of flattery, right? That is true. They say that all the time. Uh, here we go. We have OU Magic. I love it. There are some things that flat out work. Pretty much what I said earlier. 
When you have a brand preference, it is nice when your brand admits when someone else is onto something and tries to improve the design. Anything that gives the consumer more options is a win in my book. I agree with you, OU Magic, and I think many others would as well. We talk a lot about there being a lot of room in this space for everybody. Not just with golf podcasts, but also with golf equipment, golf websites, anything. I mean, the golf industry itself is pretty small. I mean, a lot of people know each other. I've learned that over the years, both good ways and bad ways. (laughs) But also, it means that, yeah, we have a lot of room in here, but we also want to acknowledge when a competitor or somebody down the street comes out with something really great. And I do believe that imitation is the sincerest form of flattery, as long as you do it respectfully and not in a way that is infringing on anybody else. And I think for the most part, for the most part, that happens. Just a few more comments here. One from Golf Ghost. I mean, it's like cars. See, another car analogy. A lot of fast cars are starting to look similar because science has led to ways to measure drag. Ooh. Uh, similar to clubs and performance. A certain shape produces a desired outcome. And then we have one here from Iceman. I'm not buying a product that is similar to the original unless it's been proven by those that I value their reviews to have taken the original design and improved it. I want innovation, not replication, in the products I purchase. Now that's an interesting point. There's a lot of bad connotations that come out when you see a similar product to something else. The most negative, of course, is somebody saying that this is a knockoff. I believe that there was another Twitter uh, follower that mentioned something along those lines to me where he had, I believe it was his father-in-law, who uh, was uh, gifted a uh, set of irons, I believe it was, that uh, looked very similar to a better known brand, and he always called them knockoffs, when in fact it was an established company, not as big as the other one, that came out with a set of irons that did look similar but he always referred to them as knockoffs. I like to think, and I could you know, picture this and insert myself in this as well, where my first set of irons that I ever had, uh, which I can't even remember the name of them, but they were quote-unquote knockoff pings. They looked like ping I-2s, but they weren't. So you have a negative connotation, and I think maybe that is human nature also. If you see something that looks similar to something else, and if it's not the name brand, you're going to call it a knockoff. Is that right or wrong? I don't know. Are you still enjoying the game? I guess that's really what it all boils down to. If you're a purist, maybe you would want the original brand as well. Uh, Another comment here from Century Hack. It's unfortunately the nature of the beast. One company has success with a product. Others are going to try to get in on it. Happens in all industries, not just golf. I would prefer people came up with their own ideas and designs. Fair enough. We have a lot of brands that come on this podcast, and they talk about the same thing. They talk about innovation. They talk about new technology. I got to say, the phrase innovation or the word innovation, that is the most commonly thrown around term in PR speak from companies. Almost every single press release that comes out has something innovative in it. And most of the time, I would say that that's true. Most of the time. Not every time. There are very few and far between instances when something incredibly innovative, truly innovative, comes out from a golf company. All of these companies want to compete with one another. That is obvious. But I still think that providing options to the player even if it means it's an option that looks similar to something else. That's not a bad thing. It's just appeasing, as I said earlier, that player type that doesn't necessarily want to stray from your brand, but is interesting, interested rather in what you know the guy next door might have. Hey, can I get that in my, uh, in my brand as well? So thanks to all of you, and there were, there were many others in the thread as well, and I can't get to all of them, but uh, you know, most of you said it's pretty much not a bad deal, a uh, big deal rather, It's nature of the beast, nature of the beast. This guy just says, it's fine. (laughs) I appreciate that. Others say it doesn't bug them at all. Now, where this becomes an issue is when there is just flat-out imitation, uh, borderline 
or, or you know really towing that line on trademark infringement and there were a lot of examples that were shared with me most recently and I'll, and I'll keep everyone uh, you know anonymous in this because I didn't really get permission to share <laughs> to share their uh, their names in this but I had a, a an industry friend reach out to me about um, clothing and clothing design graphics and there were a lot of instances that this person uh, shared with me in examples screenshots actually mainly from Instagram and, and other forms of social media where clothing brands uh, were flat out, I'll just use the word copying one another. And there were some instances that were really blatant. I mean, just really bad. And, you know, while I'm not recording this to call anybody out, you know, per se, because I firmly believe that if there are no trademarks anywhere, then really it's the original, uh, the originator of the design. It, it, it's on that person to, to protect him and him or herself. I mean, you, you have to, you have to do that. You have to go ahead and, and, you know, get that trademark, you know, do whatever you want to need to do in order to do that. Because while imitation is the most sincere form of flattery, there's also theft. <laughs> I mean, there's also fraud. Um, and you have to really be careful about that. And I think in the, uh, um, the apparel industry that runs rampant, uh, there are a lot of, you know, you see, you hear all these, you know, these upstart t-shirt companies or, you know, head cover companies and all these artisan brands that are popping up overnight. I mean, man, I got to tell you, I've seen it myself. There, there's some, some shady things going on where, you know, you have to think, did they get the licensing rights to that thing? You I mean, you have to really be careful out there, folks. And, uh, you know, brands, if you're listening to this, I mean, you know the way it works. And I know that everyone wants to get that upper hand, but... You know, there's there's a difference there. There's there's definitely a difference, and many of you are towing the line, uh, very unsafely. So uh, at any rate, uh, what are your thoughts on the whole imitation thing? I mean, do, do you agree? If you've not had the chance to uh, chime in either on Twitter or at the Hackers Paradise on your opinion about uh, well-established golf brands uh, playing by the rules but coming out with equipment that looks very similar to their competitors. How, where do you land on that whole thing? You know, reach out to me at Golf Unfiltered all over social, and you can also send me an email, golfunfiltered at gmail.com. You know, personally speaking, as I've mentioned before, you know, there's nothing wrong with it. I think it makes a lot of sense for those people that are loyal to those brands, but I can also understand where it gets to be a little bit convoluted and a little, little uh, messy at times. I mean, we hear stories all the time especially in the golf ball market, that one that just pops to mind. A few years back, there was a whole Titleist lawsuit where uh, that was a, certainly a little bit closer to uh, you know infringement, at least as far as the claims there. But we also saw a TaylorMade versus PXG lawsuit that I believe has concluded as of mid-2019. Uh, somebody keep me honest on that. Derek, if you're listening, let me know. <laughs> uh, you, our good friend Derek Brent has been on the show as well. He literally wrote the patent law, so that's a good, that's a good resource there for you. But we see these instances all over the, t all, all the time, all over the place. And you know, not a lawyer, but I, I have a sense that this happens a lot more often than we think. And, and certainly, as I mentioned earlier, in the more creative elements of design, like T-shirts, apparel, you know, head covers things that you have to actually design a logo, you know, make sure that you get rights for those things too, folks. Let's, let's all play nice in the sandbox. So, all right, folks, the only other thing I'd like to mention is, um, as I mentioned earlier, uh, PGA show, PGA merchandise show in Orlando, Florida is around the corner. I will be going down again, uh, to help out the hackers paradise. Uh, we're going to go for the full week and I need to pack better than I did last time. <laughs> I mean, I, I just had the wrong footwear. I, you know, will save, you know, the brand name. If you've listened to this podcast, you know who I'm referring to. But they just did not make, they did not treat me well uh, on my feet <laughs> for, for the walking that's going to occur. And I didn't go for a full week last year, so this is going to be a true test. Uh, but I hope I got the right footwear. Uh, I hope I have enough changes of clothes um, to go in and to go for a full week. You know, it's, it's always going to be interesting. Now, I've never actually gone to demo day. My understanding is that's going to be on the agenda uh, this time around, at least for me. 
Uh, and so I'm looking forward to seeing the huge driving range. You know, I've, I've never been there. I've only ever saw it on social media and what you all post for those who have been down there. So I'm interested to see a lot of the new products. I'm interested to hopefully hit a few. Um, typically, when I go down to the show, it's it's not a lot of uh, not a lot of opportunity for me to try any of the products. <laughs> and I think a lot of us could say the same thing because honestly, it's just there to take a look at everything that's coming out and to uh, to share the stories of what these brands are coming out with and to meet a lot of people. I mean, I last year, as you all remember, if you listen to the last show back in January prior to the 2019 PGA show, uh, you knew or you remember that that was the first time I had been back to Orlando in many years. And it was great to get to uh, put faces to names, people that I normally just correspond with over email. I got to shake their hand for once, and I'm looking forward to doing the same uh, this year around, uh, around this time as well. So uh, stay tuned for more content regarding that. Stay tuned to our social media channels as well as this podcast feed for uh, news coming out of Orlando after the PGA show. And once again, folks, I am excited for 2020. Just wanted to hop on really quick and do a kickoff of the new year uh, on the podcast. And I an open invitation to anybody, any brands out there. I know we've scheduled a lot of you all already to come on the show and to share the stories of your new products and services. I'm excited to speak with all of you, and I know our listeners are excited to hear it. So with that, I will sign off. Stay good, stay healthy, have a great 2020, everybody, and we'll talk again soon.